Yes, am I audible? Abdul Khadija? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yes, we had started with the multiplication of vectors, dot product and cross product we have to complete in today's class. See, uh, you have two vectors, A vector and B vectors, both are present and they are subtending a certain angle, theta in between them. All right, now value of one velocity is five meter per second, second is minus three meter per second, angle between them is 60 degree. This is an example. First, let us understand the generalized case, then we'll understand how to solve it in detail. See, if two vectors are present, they are subtending an angle theta. When you are taking their dot product, dot product means A dot B, right? A dot B. So this is written as magnitude of A multiplied to magnitude of B into cos theta. All right? Magnitude of A, magnitude of B into cos theta. This is how we write it. A, B, cos theta. This is A dot B. Suppose this is an example. I have to find out V1 vector dot V2 vector. So what is the magnitude of V1? The magnitude is 5. What is the magnitude of second? Magnitude means you do not have to include the signs. You just have to take the number. So this is 3 only. Into what is cos theta? This is cos 60, 60 degree. So this is 15. This is half. So dot product of V1 into V2 will become 7.5 meter per second. This is how we have to solve Magnitude of first, magnitude of second, multiplied to cos theta. Quickly note it down, then we'll see properties of dot product. This is helpful when you will get the final answer as a scalar quantity.
Yes, class. Now, uh, certain properties of it. See, uh, first thing is that result is scalar, as I've already mentioned. Result is scalar means what? Uh, suppose uh, I am taking two quantities and I'm taking the dot product of both the quantities. So the new quantity which I'm getting, that is a scalar quantity. For example, force. Force is a vector quantity, right? Velocity. Velocity is also a vector quantity, right? Force is a vector quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. Now, when I will take the dot product, force and velocity when I'll take their dot product. So force multiplied to velocity, that is dot product of force and velocity. This is going to be power. Now see, this was a vector quantity. This was a vector quantity. This is a scalar. All right. So this you have to remember whenever you have two vectors getting uh, and you're calculating their dot product then final answer will be a scalar. This is one of the properties of it. Now it is commutative means if you write F dot V, you write V dot F, you write A dot B, you write B dot A, answer will be the same in dot product. This is exactly the opposite in cross product. Now, perpendicular vectors. What is meant by perpendicular vector? Universal vectors we did. Remember, on x-axis, you have i-cap. On y-axis, you have j-cap. On z-axis, you have k-cap, right? So, for i-cap, uh, i-cap uh, is on x-axis. Your uh, j-cap is on, uh, on y-axis. Your k-cap is on z-axis. So when you are taking perpendicular vectors, perpendicular vectors means you are taking either x or y, y or z, z or x, like this. i cap dot j cap, j cap dot k cap, k cap dot i cap. Understood all the perpendicular vectors which we have. If I'm talking about x axis, I'll be considering i cap. If I'm talking about y axis, I'll be considering j cap. If I'm talking about z axis, I'll be considering k cap. So if any of these are perpendicular and we are, all these are perpendicular, yes, all of them are making an angle of 90 degrees. So when these two are taken or these two are taken or these two are taken, answer will be zero. The answer will then become zero. Why it becomes zero? Because cos 90 comes, the reason behind is that cos 90, theta becomes 90 degrees. So cos 90 is zero because your theta is 90 degree. Fine, these are perpendicular vectors. Now what is meant by parallel vectors? So perpendicular clear, all the vectors, unit vectors, which are perpendicular to each other. Now what is meant by parallel vectors? See, parallel vectors are those vectors which are parallel to the x-axis means if I have I cap here, and I'll consider I cap only, right? I cap we have here, I'm, we are considering I cap only. So when you are taking the dot product of these, I cap dot I cap, because I cap and I cap are parallel, X axis is parallel to X axis only, right? Because angle is zero degree. If I give you two lines and they are overlapping to each other. So we'll say, no, th those lines are parallel. That's why they are overlapping on each other. So when you take i dot i, j dot j, k dot k cap, this becomes one. This becomes one. Because theta is zero degree and your cos zero degree is one. That's why you have these as one. Fine, these are uh, not hel helpful so individually, but these are helpful uh, in your uh, uh, total numerical perspective when you have the total numericals from it. Last thing, see if cos the, uh, theta is zero and two vectors are exactly the same. So this was, you kn knew it, i cap, j cap, k cap, all these are universal vectors. You already know them. So you will be able to figure it out whether they are perpendicular, whether they are parallel. If two vectors are given, which are exactly the same, C class, then also they are parallel vectors. Only. Not parallel with the universal vectors, they are parallel among themselves. If I give you um, i cap dot i cap, both were same, right? If I'm giving one vector over one vector, nothing else. Just take their magnitude a square, that's it. Why? Because theta will become zero degree here also. And cos zero degree will become one. Why theta will become zero? Because this both of them are same quantity. 
right? Both of them are same quantities. So if you place this like this and then put one more on it, it will be exactly the same. So a dot a, b dot b, any two vectors which are similar, then directly use a square. Uh, Cartesian form, I'll tell you, first note down these properties, all right? So what do you have to remember? One conclusion, it's a scalar quantity, it's commutative means you can interchange them. Perpendicular vectors will always be zero and parallel vectors will always be one. All right, note it down.
Yes, class. Uh, see now a dot product in Cartesian form. Now, how do you add two vectors which are given? How do you subtract two vectors which are given? See, when we take dot product in Cartesian form, this is A vector, this is B vector. So what we do, when we have to add two vectors, whatever is the coefficient along with I cap, we'll add it together. Then coefficient of J caps are added together. Coefficients of K caps are added together. Like um, A1 I cap, B1 I cap. So A1 plus B1 I cap. All right. Uh, mul multiplied, not sorry, added, multiplied. A1 multiplied to B1. And I cap dot I cap, we already know it's one. So it just becomes A1 B1. Clear? A2, see, this is A2 J cap dot b2 j cap a2 b2 will be multiplied this becomes a2 b2 and j cap j cap will be 1 so we have answer as a2 b2 so a2 multiplied by b2 then this coefficient multiplied by this coefficient this is how we solve it see let's take an example suppose uh, these are two vectors which are given so what will you do 3 multiplied to this Three I cap, one I cap. So three multiplied by one plus. All right. Now what is the coefficient of J cap here? Minus three. What is the coefficient of J cap here? Minus one. What is the coefficient of K cap here? Four. Multiply to the coefficient here. What is the coefficient here? Minus one. So what are we left with? This becomes three. This becomes uh, four, uh, plus three. Right? So three plus 3 minus 4. That is 2. This is how. So some more question. Let's see. See, this says that force is 2i cap plus 3j cap minus 5k cap. Displaces the body from this point to this point. Now, we do not know what are the exact values in Cartesian form. What do we know? We only know that it is written in terms of coordinates. So what we'll do? If it is written, written in terms of coordinate, we'll make it as a statement. See, if a coordinate is given as 2, 3, 0, I don't know whether it's I cap, J cap, K cap. So what will I do? See, starting one will become X. This will become Y. This will become Z. So R A position vector of A, this will become 2 I cap plus 3 J cap plus 0 K cap. If you want, you can write 0k cap or you, you can even just leave it till here like this. Clear? This is how we form the equations. 2i cap plus 3j cap. This is written like this. All right. Coming to point B. 4, 2, 1. This is x, y, z. x is what? This is 4i cap plus 2 j cap plus 1 k cap. So this is 4 i cap plus 2 j cap plus k cap. Now you have the initial point. You have the final point. Yes. Which is the initial point? C class A. This was the initial point. This B. This B is the final point. So how do we calculate the displacement? Final minus initial. How do we cal calculate the displacement? Final minus initial. This is how we calculated. What's the final? Final is 4i cap plus 2j cap plus k cap minus this we studied when we were discussing unit vectors. Remember 2i cap plus 3j cap. That time also we had seen the same. When you are adding it, add the coefficients. When you are subtracting it, subtract the coefficients. If it is dot product, multiply the coefficients. So this becomes C, 4i cap minus 2i cap gives you 2i cap. 2j cap minus 3k cap gives you minus j cap plus k cap. This is what this is the net displacement from B to A. A to B actually. This is the net displacement. First tell me, is this clear till here? How we have solved the question till here? Initial point, final point, we are taking the displacement. This you have already studied in the unit vectors. 
right? Now see, what do we have to find? We have the displacement. We have the force. What is the formula of work done? Work done's formula is force into displaced. You will have work energy in part. There also you have this. F dot S. What is force? Force is 2i cap plus 3j cap minus 5k cap. 2i cap plus 3j cap minus 5k cap. This multiplied to what is the displacement? This is the displacement. What is it? 2i cap minus j cap plus k cap. Now we have to multiply the coefficients. Like coefficients, you will multiply it together. 2i cap multiplied to 2i cap. So 2 into 2. Understood? i cap dot i cap is 1. What is 2 into 2? This you will write. Plus 3 multiplied to minus 1. Plus minus 5 multiplied to plus 1. So what are we left with? 4 minus 3 minus 5. Right? So this is 4 minus 8. That is minus. This is how we have to write it. Other questions we will see. First you all note it down. Now you all will answer. So write it down if you are still not able to understand anything. Please get it clarified right now only. While you are writing, because now after this, then I'll start asking you questions.
uh, class, this type of question also comes when you have to find out the angle. Now, how will you find the angle? See, if you uh, take any other method, like if you add both the vectors, so when you'll add, there won't be any existence of angle between the two. When you're subtracting them, still no angle is present between the two. When uh, you will take the dot product of both the vectors, see, suppose I have taken this vector A dot B, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cos theta. The only way to involve theta is this only take the dot product of both of them. You will get theta in your answer. So dot product of AB is equal to magnitude of A, magnitude of B into cos theta. Now we have to find out everything. What is A dot B? A dot B, first let us solve the left-hand side, LHS. A dot B. Yes, uh, Shaista, can we start with you? Yes, ma'am. A dot B, how should I start? One. One, very good. Coefficients will get multiplied. So one into one, that is, this is one into one. Very good. Plus, yes, Shaista. Two into minus two. Minus two into plus two. Yes, two into minus two. And lastly, Shaista. Three into minus five. Three into minus five. Very good. So you will be able to do all the questions. Good. This is one minus four minus 15. So here we are having uh, minus 19 minus 18, right? So this is minus 18, this side. So this is solved by us. Now magnitude of A. Class, remember how I have told you to calculate the magnitude of any vector. Anybody who remembers it? Magnitude of any vector. We did in the last class also. Under root and square the coefficients and add them. Please do not forget this. This is a very basic uh, procedure. Coefficient of A. See, what is the coefficient of I cap? It's 1. So we'll take 1 square plus coefficient of j cap it's 2 so 2 square coefficient of k cap 3 so 3 square so this becomes 1 plus 4 plus 9 so this is equal to root 14 so what we have solved we have solved this. We have found the magnitude of A. Magnitude of B is missing. Let's do the same thing to find out the magnitude of B. I cap. Uh, one I cap. So it will be one square. Minus two. So minus two square. And then lastly we have minus five. So plus minus five squared. So this becomes 1 plus 4 plus 25. That is equal to root 30. Fine. Now we have all the values. We just have to find out the value of cos theta. What is A dot B? A dot B we have calculated. It's minus 18. What's A dot B? A dot B is minus 18. Equal to what is magnitude of A? Root 14. Magnitude of B? Root 30 into cos theta. So your uh, cos theta will be equal to minus 18 divided by under root 14 into 30. Solve it. Whatever answer you're getting, that would be the answer. Uh, this is last component part is left, no? Hmm. Okay, let's do it. First, uh, note down this question. Then that end part of dot product we do. Then we'll start with cross product.
Uh, class, now the last portion of dot product. One topic that comes in here is projection. So sometimes it is asked component of A along B, component of B along A. This is not so very important, but some in some question papers, this has come as a third part. First part has asked something else. Second part has been asked something else. So as a third part, so it's not very important, but uh, you have to remember its form. When we are calculating component of A along B, the formula is A vector dot B cap entire answer multiplied to B cap. Remember how to make unit vectors when we started with vectors, we had discussed how to make unit vectors. To make unit vectors, you just take the vector divided by its magnitude that becomes a unit vector. See. According to this formula, only we have to answer. You have the formula with you. You have the uh, value of uh, magnitude with you. Just divide it. You will get it at the end. See, component of A along B, suppose we have to find out. One only we will solve. Second, we will leave. Uh, if I have to find out component of A along B, this will be the formula for the first two. Okay. Now see what is A vector. A vector, we'll write it as it is. So we have the vector A. What is B cap? What is B cap? So I have told you to make any unit vector. Take the vector as it is and divide by its magnitude. Take the vector as it is, divide by its magnitude. What is the vector? What is B vector? I cap minus J cap minus K cap. I cap minus J cap minus K cap divided by. What is the magnitude? How do you calculate the magnitude? Under root coefficient of I square, then coefficient of J square, then coefficient of K cap square. So we are left with I cap minus J cap minus K cap divided by root 3. This is B vector, B cap. Now coming to our formula, once we have B cap, what was A vector? I cap plus J cap minus 2K cap or plus 2K cap? Minus 2K cap. Minus 2K cap. Now see I cap plus J cap minus 2K cap if you have. First we have to do A vector and the dot product of this. See class, when we are taking a vector multiplied to dot product of this means i cap plus j cap minus 2k cap dot product with means multiplied to i cap by root 3 minus j cap by root 3 minus k cap by root 3. I have just separated the terms so that it becomes easier for us to identify the coefficients. Now, I cap multiplied by I cap by root 3. That is 1 multiplied to 1 by root 3. That becomes 1 multiplied to 1 by root 3. So see, this becomes when you are writing it, I uh, 1 multiplied. So I cap dot I cap is, uh, uh, this I cap dot I cap is 1. Now what we'll do, this becomes 1 into um See, or one more thing that we can do when we are taking this as common. Or let's write it all together only. Let's write it together. This becomes 1 by root 3. Uh, minus, this is also 1 by root 3 only. And this becomes minus 2 by root 3. This is A cap dot B cap. This does it complete our answer. Answer is completed when you again multiply it by B. So A, B cap multiplied to B cap. This is A vector multiplied to B cap. That is 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 minus 2 by root 3. And what is B cap? B cap is I cap by root 3 minus J cap by root 3 minus uh, K cap by root. 
so this is simple multiplication you are just multiplying it so this becomes um 2i cap by root 3 uh, by 3 root 3 into root 3 is 3 so this becomes i cap by 3 this becomes minus uh, j cap by 3 this becomes no minus into minus that becomes plus and minus into minus that becomes plus 2k cap by so we can take um, three common we can take three common or we can leave our answer at this step also so this is how it is will be now one last thing when it says geometrical meaning of dot product geometrical meaning of dot product See, geometrical meaning of dot product means you have one vector, you have one vector. Remember, we did resolution of vectors. If this is a vector, this is theta. What did I tell you? How to solve? How to resolve the vectors? The angle, the axis with which the angle is made, we write it as cos theta. So this is a cos theta. Yes. So what exactly geometrical meaning is? See, a dot b is a b cos theta. Can I write it as a cos theta into b? A dot b is a b cos theta, so I can write a b cos theta as a cos theta into b. What is a cos theta? A cos theta is actually component of a along b. This is component of a. along okay. that's it when you are asked to write about the geometrical product so geometrically dot product of two vectors is the product of magnitude of one vector and projection of another see how projection is a cos theta and another vector was already b vector this is just for your remembrance geometrical meaning and this this part component part this is not very important but it is included in your syllabus so that's why we have to discuss that's all about dot product till here any doubts shaista is it clear to you shaista yes ma'am mariam yes ma'am what about you abdul clear yes ma'am khadija yes khadija any doubts no ma'am any yes. doubts if you people are having you can type it in the chat column also you can unmute and ask best way is to type in the chat column because this dot product is very important part note it down then we'll start with cross product
let's start with cross uh, product class now uh, see coming to cross product cross product is a little different from dot product with uh, just one variable of the angle see in your dot product you have cos theta in your cross product you have sin theta all right but there are different properties properties are definitely going to be different so a cross b will be equal to magnitude of a magnitude of b multiplied to sin theta often we write this as a b sin theta n cap where n cap just tells the direction of a cross b this is what is dot product or vector product why vector product because you get the final result as a vector that is the first property result will be a vector like torque torque is radius vector cross force force is a vector radius is a vector and torque is also a vector in dot product the final result was a scalar and this is anti commutative if you are writing it as a cross b you can not write it as b cross a you can not write it as b cross a totally different answer it will give you you can write 3 plus 2 as 2 plus 3 you can write 2 into 3 as 3 into 2 this is not valid that is known as commutative property this is not valid over here i is anti commutative for b cross a you have to solve everything separately both the answers are different now what are the parallel vectors i cross i j cross j k cross k will give you zero and what about the perpendicular vectors you have a trick to remember it learn this trick that will be helpful throughout you then you do not uh, need not memorize it at the corner of your page no right i cap j cap k cap in this manner like this all right i cap j cap k cap like this now if you are moving clockwise the third whichever quantity is left you will add it for example i cap to j cap which quantity is left k cap is left so k cap will come did you go clockwise or anti clockwise we went clockwise so this will be positive this time this is not 0 or 1 not 0 or 1 this is k cap if you are going from j cap to k cap which quantity is left i cap what is the direction clockwise for clockwise we write plus if you are moving from k cap to i cap which quantity is left j cap you are moving clockwise so this is plus suppose let's do it reversed if we are moving from j cap to i cap which quantity is left k cap but we are moving in this direction that is anti clockwise so we will put minus i cap cross k cap quantity that is left is j cap now what is the sign this is anti clockwise so this is negative then again k cap to j cap which quantity is left this is i cap sign will be negative this is how you put it cartesian form i'll tell you this is done in the form of matrix first write this down
Okay. See now a Cartesian form when you have to solve. If we have like R cross F. So we have to write it in determinants form. I cap, J cap, K cap. So whatever is the coefficient, write it in the same order. If you have R cross F, then you will write it as R cross F. So the coefficients here, 3, 2, what is the coefficient of K cap? Plus 1. Then 4, so what is the coefficient of I cap? 1, coefficient of K, uh, J cap is nothing, so 0. K cap is 3. Now, please understand, class, how to solve this. This is a little complicated. It's not simple as dot product was. When you are solving this for I cap, cut the entire row and column of I cap. Fine? You are left with four numbers now. I cap's row and column has been deleted. You are left with four numbers now. Then multiply diagonally down minus diagonally up that is 2 into 3 minus 1 into z this is how you will do it for i cap these four are left so we took them they multiplied they got multiplied minus this. clear now coming to j cap for j cap Eliminate its column, eliminate its row. Put a negative sign for J cap. Always remember to put a negative sign for J cap. Now go as it is. Diagonally down minus diagonally up. That is 3 into 3 minus 1 into 1. Fine? Coming to... The last one, K cap, cut this, cut this. What you are left with? You are again left with four numbers. For I cap, you will put plus. For K cap, you will put plus. For J cap, you will put minus. What is now left? Diagonally down, minus diagonally up. That is 3 into 0 minus 1 into That's it how you have to solve. Now see how will we write the final answer. 2 into 3. This is 6 minus 1. That is 5i cap. 9 minus 1. That is, this is 9 minus 1. 8. 9 minus 1, 8. And this minus. So minus 8j cap. 3 into 0 is 0. This becomes minus 2. Minus 2. This is the answer to R cross F. Is it clear? This is not, you cannot directly add it, multiply it, subtract it. This pattern has to be followed in every question. Do you want to ask anything till here? It's clear, I hope, to all of you. Yes, ma'am. Mariam yes, ma Abdul. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Note it down. Yes. This is the way you have to solve questions in cross product. Note it down. If you want to ask anything, you can. I'm here.
uh, last topic class, then I leave you all. See, just in case it comes, geometrical meaning of cross product. So actually, no, when you are taking the cross product geometrical meaning, this becomes a parallelogram. A cross B is actually the area of the parallelogram. So when you have to calculate area of triangle, you write A cross B divided by two. That's it. That's it. All right. Why? Because A cross B is actually, this is representing parallelogram. And A cross B we are taking. So which is representing the area of parallelogram. Clear? So this is how we write it. Just mention this and text me once you are done with this. If you people have completed, you can leave. Um, on Thursday, we'll continue. Now, projectile motion. Your vectors are over. Straight away, we'll start with projectile motion. Okay, class. Thank you so much. Please attempt your after-class assessment.